Hey folks, it's Chad here with Airstream in Greensboro, and I'm super excited because I have behind me the all new 2024 Airstream Flying Cloud 27 FB with the hatch, which is awesome. I'm gonna do a full walk around of the inside and the outside. Now, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna give you all of the improvements for 2024 on the Flying Cloud. Now, I did a separate video just on the new GE air conditioners that they're using. Sorry, sneak peek or spoiler alert there. Um, if you haven't seen that video and you're interested just in that, I'll link that, uh, that side above. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna jump into the 2024 Flying Cloud 27 FB with the hatch option and all the 2024 improvements. So this one, I'm gonna do a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna start with the inside and then I'm gonna do the outside. I know a lot of you are like, Chad, I know what the airstream looks like. They all look the same. And I've heard that. I've, I've heard the feedback and I received the feedback. So I'm gonna start on the inside. I will do a full outside walk if you haven't you know, seen that or wanna see that. I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to see uh, the data port. That's a big improvement and that's gonna start on the outside. But we're gonna start inside and then outside and of course, I'm gonna go through the changes as well. So let's get into my favorite thing to talk about. And you're like, Chad, you talk about this every time. I know, that's because not everyone has seen one of my videos. So here's the door. Now the door, Airstream spends right at eight hours manufacturing this door by hand in-house. Don't want that door to slam. Uh, manufacturing in-house. Now there is a new, and they say improved door latch system. Uh, and I, I guess that's this. <laughs> it does seem, uh, it seems to be, you know, it, it, is, it is different in that it, that it opens. I don't know how to say that. It's, it's smoother. Uh, but this latch does seem different. That part seems the same. That seems exactly the same. I think this is different. What I would love to see is an aluminum version of this. So if somebody wants to make that, I'm sure you could sell that to all of the Airstream folks out there. But it seems to work very well. Um, you're going to have eight welds per side on this screen door. These screen doors are made and manufactured so that they fit with the door that they are mating to, which is kind of unique, I think, to Airstream. And then that's what the door is going to look like on its own. It's a little bit of a plain Jane, but that's Airstream for you. When the uh, screen is up, it looks far more interesting. And then one of the things I always like to point out is the welds. And if you watch my videos, you're going to see the welds in these door frames and what you're going to notice is they all look the same i mean the attention to detail in the manufacturing process for airstream is just is unheard of and that's one of the things that makes airstream unique that's why you buy buy an airstream now the door locks will lock you out so one of the habits i have is to always push that lock unlock uh, there are some some little modifications you can do to kind of help keep this from locking you out but that is possible now you are gonna have two separate keys. You have one key for the, the handle and one key for the deadbolt. Uh, on this one, because it is the hatch, you have a third key. Yes, that is right, a third key that is just for the hatch itself. Now that is an area Airstream could improve, if, improve on if they wanted to, which would be to have one key for all of your locks, but they haven't quite done that yet. Now entering into the flying cloud, and I'm gonna close the door behind me because it is, a hot summer day here in the great state of North Carolina. Just give you a look, there's the hatch. Of course, it's gonna be a different table than you're used to seeing uh, if you have been in a flying cloud that doesn't have the hatch. This is the Seattle Mist option. We do still have the Carolina Clay. And then the kitchen. And just kind of giving you a quick overview and this is the 27FB, so you're going to have the double storage here. This is the queen bed model. And I don't mind the queen bed. You guys know I love a twin bed. But I really don't mind the queen bed in the 27-foot 27, 27 floor plan because there is so much room to get around the bed. Uh, it feels like a proper bed to me. On the 25-foot, 23-foot, I'd much rather have the, the twin bed. Just give me the twin bed. All right, so let's move back around to the front. We're gonna get started up here. Now this does have the hatch, which I will open and show you, I promise. 
Uh, now this is the goodie box. <laughs> this doesn't stay here. And I'll, I'll go through the contents of this in a second. Uh, but this table here for the dinette, it's going to screw down into uh, the, the floor here. And I actually prefer this one versus what you traditionally get in a 27FB Flying Cloud uh, that's kind of attached to the wall there. Like you can completely remove that table uh, and I prefer that style. Um, I'm sure there's a reason Airstream does it that way, but that's how they do it. There's going to be some storage underneath this seat that pulls out right there. And then you're also going to have storage underneath here as well. So lots of good storage, heat vent. That's going to be your inverted circuit, uh, power plug, 110 power plug. That's normally going to be kind of in the middle of the wall right there. But for the um, hatch, they move it to there. Coming above, you're going to have the GL radio, GL audio. It's a fantastic sounding radio. Honestly, it's the best sounding radio. I think that um, I think I've ever heard in an RV. There is a subwoofer. It's under this seat, I believe. So it's going to be back there in that area. And then this is going to be kind of your entertainment slash plug area. Um, you're going to have a couple of new plugs here or just really one new plug. That's going to be the data port. Now, this is for Starlink uh, or any other thing that you can utilize a Cat6 data port for because that's what that is, is a Cat6 data port. Now, right beside this is going to be 12 volt, uh, kind of your regular traditional, oh, that's USB, huh, <laughs> funny, USB. And then USB power, you've got a power circuit there that's going to be inverted circuit. And then this is now your um, antenna, your HD antenna, like regular TV antenna power switch. So they used to have that beside one of the TVs and they decided to move it here for the 2024 model year. Kind of hard to see there, but there's a little button right there that you would turn on and off and there's a little green light as well. And that's a wine guard, if you're wondering. Then you've got your HDMI input. So that's there in the event that you did want to have a DVD player, an Apple TV, a Roku, whatever it might be, uh, connected to your TVs. And this is a central location for that to be. Uh, and it can plug in there. You've got power right there. And then that connects to your TVs. But that leads to a new change for this year. We now have smart TVs that have the capability of connecting to Netflix and YouTube, Prime Video. Of course, it's full color. Uh, I haven't dove into this TV much, but it is still the 12-volt TV. They added 12-volt last year. And now they're able to add a smart TV to both TVs that come in the flying cloud. All right, let's go into the storage. The other storage that you get up here, that's your pack that comes with all of your manuals for all for every Airstream. Every Airstream gets a pack. And then you've got your really nice sofa area. Um, you do want to sit on a sit on the couch in a flying cloud before you buy one, obviously. Um, if you can, you know, take a you know, come to a store, come to Greensboro, have a seat just to see the comfort. There's going to be a different comfort. These feel I, and I, they're probably exactly the same, but to me, this feels firmer than last year. And moving around to here, we're going to have some more plugs. You'll have another inverted circuit, which used to be for your TV, but now it's just available power. You've got the other side of the HDMI is coming in right there. That's your coax cable that's coming from outside. And then that's just a little pass through for your 12 volt power that is going to the 12 volt TV. Now below that is the new GE air conditioning system. So the 2024 model year now has a GE profile 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And if you opt for the second AC, it's going to be a 13,500 uh, BTU air conditioner. Now what I do like about the new system is that the, the controls are separated, at least for now. You've got one up here in the front for the front AC, and then way back here in the back, you have the second one for the second AC. I like that because to me, this is much easier to use than the old Dometic system where it was like you had to pick the zone and then turn that zone on and then go to the other zone and turn that zone on and then remember which zone was, was which. You don't have that problem now. If you want to turn the front AC on, it's this one. If you want to turn the, or I guess this is the back AC because we're in the back of the coach. And if you want to turn the front on, you turn that one on there. 
and set those temperatures. Now it is a 90 plus degree day outside. I've got all the windows open now because that makes for a better video experience. So a lot of sun, solar energy is coming in. I had the skylights open, but man, does the sun come through those skylights. So I closed those back down. I will say the AC has done tremendous. Uh, I got here this morning around 10 o'clock. Turn, uh, turned them both on, got them plugged in, and actually cooled the system down to right, to right around 71 degrees. Um, and then it got really hot and we've kind of creeped up a little bit, but it seems to be maintaining around about 72, 73 degrees. So what about, I've got it set at 70. Um, they seem to be working fine. They work as expected. Uh, I'm basically just outside on a parking lot. So I'm getting all of the, the heat that comes just from being in direct sunlight and all the heat around us. Now, one thing I will say about this control is it seems to be significantly easier to use than the old Dometic system. So mode is going to take you cycle through, um, actually, so we'll get up close. So you got your cool, heat pump, heat pump and furnace, just furnace, and then off. So that's going to take you to off. It seems to be like an e-paper style screen, so it's very easy to read, very legible, not quite legible. Uh, you can turn just the fan on and then the fan on auto plus cool, which is where I want it to be. And then down here, you have the ability to control the fan. So you can have it on low, on fan high, and then on auto. And actually, like it's pretty quick in how fast it adjusts. As far as changing the temperature, you just hit the temperature button up and down to the desired temperature, and it tells you set temp. So this is what you've got it set at. And then once the screen goes to standby, it stays on. And you can see what the temp is it then gives you your inside temperature reading now this doesn't show outside temp or anything like that just showing you your inside temp and what you, what you have it set to but the system does seem to be working really well one thing i have noticed just kind of today messing with it this front area because there is you know 13,000 bt 13.5 uh btu k b whatever 13,500 btuac um this area cools down very good, very great. It cools down very quick. What I noticed with this one is it will turn off while the front one, the front area isn't cooled down. So you'll just have one AC running up there and the second one will cut off. I'm sure that's something that you just, you just have to know, you know, manage because it's not the system, even the Dometic system didn't control, you know, the front and the, the front and back one as one unit it was still controlling them as two different units. So you either want to turn this down lower so that it keeps running to help cool the front down. Or what I did today was I shut these two vents that, that go into the bedroom area. And it's, I mean, you can see it's 71 in here. It's doing just fine. And I also shut the uh, bathroom to push both ACs to the front because that's it's daytime and we're going to be up here anyway in the front. That's kind of my thinking there. Um, I'm sure you avid Airstreamers have all kinds of tricks that you use when it comes to the AC system. But new AC for this year, the GE Profile. And as I'm talking about that, I need to mention that uh, there is a change to the um, the, f the frame. Um, <laughs> gosh, sorry, I'm trying to think of how to put this in words. So it used to be a welded inner skeleton for Airstream. And the Airstream artisans would cut those, they'd hand weld it um to make the inner frame and you know they put insulation in they did outside skin put insulation in they glue it to that skin and then um put the inside skin in eventually so now with the 24 model year they've moved to a stamped rib instead of the hand welded rib and there's a huge machine if you watch the um the video that airstream did of the new factory tour you can see it in there this is this huge green press and they can press each, each section. And that's gonna mean for the buyer a more consistent build because each of those are gonna be exactly the same. Uh, you're taking a little bit of the, um, the human element out of it. Uh, what it also did is made it so the Airstream could get rid of the bubble. Now I'm gonna show that in a second. So make sure you watch to the end or you know get into the outside video. Because when I do the outside, I'm gonna talk about the new roof line. And so the GE, air conditioner is going to give you the new filter system that we've had in the classic the globetrotter and the pottery barn for a bit now 
a um, couple of screws you pull out, this will come down and you can clean this filter out. I think it's like a MERV 8 or MERV 4 or something like that. Like this is not going to be residential, but it is more than what we had previously and it's much easier to clean this out than previously as well. Uh, you're going to have that on both ACs on all of the Flying Clouds and Internationals now uh, with the new GE air conditioning system. Uh, moving to the front, I'm going to show you this storage here. Of course, the bins come with it. Now, if you know with Airstream's windows, um, to open them, you're going to pull these two th latches out and then rotate them down. And then with two hands, which I don't have right now, you'll pull up on these levers here. There's kind of three notches in here, as it always has been. You've got kind of your first level and your medium level, and then the window being as, as far out as it can be. These windows will go almost 90 degrees out. So these two windows will open. Uh, your back center window opens in the hatch. Of course, the whole hatch will open. And then up front, or in the bedroom area, uh, your center window will open once you open that solar guard. That window opens, and then the cross window to it, open, the top one opens as well. And then you've got the great little port window below. So you can get a really good breeze coming through the camper. Um, when, when it's like a cooler day, not today, today it's hot. I want the AC on and the window shut. <laughs> but on a cool day where you just want some air to flow, you can really make that happen with the windows. Uh, shades for Airstreams is the Dometic shade. It's just gonna pull straight down. And then it's got a little spot where it can latch there. Now, if you wanna do like a partial, just have some light coming in, but not all the light, it works out really well that those, uh, that little bar that goes across is just long enough for, to fit there. So you can kind of do a partial. And then of course you can put it all the way all the way up if you would like to do that as well. Now these upper shades for the port windows, I love the port windows. It just looks so, so cool with the Airstream and getting those port windows and just that incredible view that you can get um, outside. Now don't view, like imagine something other than a dealer lot. Uh, there's a nice tree there, but like, you know, just another camper, but like a really cool view, like out in the mountains or something. Um, not, not that. Same thing back here, like the beach is back there. Um, but yeah, with the windows that you get on an Airstream, just so much light can come in. And that's one thing I really like about Airstream. Okay, so in the kitchen area, you're gonna have your storage up above. And there's all kinds of great hacks, baskets and things you can put in here. Now you do have on the Flying Cloud, the soft closed cabinet doors, which is a fantastic touch. You're gonna have a surface mounted stainless steel sink. That's just some of the material the Airstream likes to ship with them and leave in the sink. Now this can kind of be a cutting board as well. One of the upgrades I see a lot of uh, Airstream owners do is put a wood um, insert here instead of the, the plastic one. You've got the rich residential style faucet right there and of course hot and cold. Funny that that is the same faucet I have in my kitchen. Now you've got some of your light switches here. These are gonna be for, that's gonna be your inside overhead lights. That is your awning light and that's your little step light. You've got your battery disconnect right there and that's a remote solenoid. So you just hit that button and you'll actually hear it click kind of in the back of the coach. Now you've got your trash can here. Yes, every stream comes with a cat trash can. It'll be the most expensive trash can you ever buy. And then you'll have some more storage right here in the front area of the kitchen. And then these all do lock in place. You can kind of shut them and let them sit like that. And then when you're traveling, of course, uh, connect them all the way in. Now on the 27 versus the 25, you're gonna have a double the size, more than double the size drawer here. These little caps, they go into the little connection point of that table right there. Uh, you've got your sil silverware organizer that does come out, so you can take this out if you want to. And then just tons of storage here in the kitchen. Of course, that tricks you into, you think there's four drawers there, there's only three. And then same thing, a little storage there. There's something back there, some kind of mechanical stuff. Now this, this customer opted for the convection microwave, which is an option. If you don't do the convection, you're gonna have an oven here and you'll have a regular microwave inside of the pantry, but because they opted for the convection, you now have this full-size pantry. So three shelves with the microwave, you would have two shelves and this would be a microwave here in a separate. So it'd be two shelves 
and then a microwave. And above, you're gonna have a very nice large area to store more goodies for your camping trip. Now, the stove is gonna be a three burner propane, propane cooktop that does have kind of a splash guard there. I'd like to say a splash guard right here. I'm sure that would be a good aftermarket mod you could do yourself. Uh, these lights here, you can turn those off right there. And then it's got just the traditional little turn to light that. The overhead vent does have a really nice light and it's like a full vent, does vent to the outside. Now that leads me to think, to talk about one more improvement that Airstream has done for 2024 model year. And that is a new, two different lights. So this center light is no longer is the old school air or the old school RV little double bubble light. It's this cool LED, super thin light strip right there. And there's a little on off button on this one. It's all the way over here, right there. Like touch sensitive. No, it's like, I think there's actually a button in there. And then the reading lights have also changed to a single LED instead of the multi LED. And then it's a smaller kind of tube like light up here now. That's one of the improvements they did. JL speakers right there and right there. There's also gonna be another pair uh, above the bed. And that light there is also gonna be here in the kitchen. Uh, of course, it's a 12 volt light, and then they do run a small little channel back for that power cable. Uh, you know, there's not, <clears throat> that's solid wood, right? This is actual wood. So there's not a spot for them to run it above or in this. So they opt to run it as a little channel right there. <clears throat> now moving back to the front area or the kitchen area, you have a really nice prep area right here in the center section. Because it's the 27, this is gonna be double than the 25. Your port windows for when you're washing dishes is also larger, and I really like that as well. Now, they opted for the solar package. So this is gonna have 300 watts of solar panels. So it's three 100 watt solar panels on top. I'll show those to you once I get to the outside. It's a Marlin panel. Uh, each cell is wired individually, so you don't lose power as you get shade on one part of the panel. The rest of the panel that's not under shade will continue to produce at its max output. It is an MPPT Vectron Energy uh, controller. You've got your um, on-off for your inverter, which leads us to another improvement. You now have a 2,000-watt inverter instead of a 1,000-watt inverter. With everybody going to lithium, and really everybody's opting for lithium now, um, they have given you the given you an upgrade there to a 2,000 watt inverter versus the 1,000 watt they were doing in the 2023 model year. You got another power plug here for the kitchen area, and then you've got your sea level two tank monitor system, which will give you. There's no batteries. That's just power coming from the charge controller. But your fresh tank, gray tank, and black tank, of course, those should be empty. And then your water pump switch is right there. So that's your basic control center for the Airstream right there. And then across from there is going to be the AC control for your front AC. Now across from the kitchen area, you're going to have your Norcol 12 volt refrigerator. You're going to hear me say 12 volt a lot today because a lot of this coach is 12 volt to make it easier for you to dry camp if you so desire. Now it only comes with two drawers. And the instruction manuals, it's gonna show three. It comes with two. Every single Airstream I've seen has come with two. But I did find these for a customer on, Air, on Amazon. So I'm pretty sure you can just buy another one of these if you wanna have more. But you've got some pull-out drawers right there. Multiple shelves. This shelf right here will fold out to create another full shelf. Or you can leave it in half to be able to put you know, milk containers or drinks and things right there. Shelf just above. And then you have a really nice large refrigerator. Now, with this being the Norcol refrigerator, it will, uh, or I should say 12 volt refrigerator, not necessarily Norcol. Uh, it is stainless steel behind this. They, the way Airstream ships these, they put this cardboard on it. Uh, it's probably the box that actually ships in over the stainless steel for it getting to us, to the dealer. And then we take that off for you, uh, hopefully before you pick it up. <laughs> um, but the 12 volt refrigerator, this will cool down in about 45 minutes and it'll be ready for you to use versus your propane 
uh, refrigerators that would go, you know, about eight hours or so before they would really get cooled down. And then they would struggle to stay cool. Uh, these will get to, to temp in about 45 minutes and maintain that temp. They also don't have to be perfectly level to work well either, um, which is a super nice thing for when you're dry camping and traveling. You're not necessarily going to always be in a flat spot. These can run safely while you're going down the road because, again, they're running off a of 12 volt. This is going to pull off the battery while your truck is charging the battery and your solar is also charging the battery. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this, it's going to pull, believe it or not, about the same amount of power from the 12 volt system as the old propane uh, refrigerators pulled because they also needed power to run even when they were using propane. And they used about the amount of power this uses on its own just as a 12 volt refrigerator. So it's kind of nifty, uh, more efficient, better, better cooling. It's just a better refrigerator all around. So I love that they're doing that. It's gonna be like an eight cubic foot refrigerator. I think it's 8.1. You don't get to the tens with Airstream until you go to the 30 foots. Now a little bit of storage above. Again, there's nothing to hold this door up. So it will slam on you if you are expecting it to stay up on its own. So that is kind of the front area of the flying cloud and i am going to demonstrate that that table just in a second and all the sleeping area that's up here i'm going to demonstrate how to convert this into your two extra bed areas and airstream says that this can sleep six now i would say it can sleep two adults and four kids and that's how you get the six or uh, two adults and two adults so four uh, you could probably possibly put two adults there but I think putting four, you know, six adults in here is going to be tight, but definitely two adults and four kids. So you can, you know, I, I do think you get to six uh, fairly easy with the 27 foot flying cloud. Now the easiest bed to make and the one I would make if I just had one person or maybe two kids with me and I wouldn't have them to have a spot to sleep at would be this one here. So we'll take these really nice pillows the Airstream includes, set them over here. We're gonna pull out this small little table. Now that table there should hold around 350 plus. Um, I believe that's what Airstream told me. If it's not labeled, it can hold at least 350 pounds. Um, it doesn't, it does fine for me. I'm not 350 pounds. I'm less than that, but it does fine for me. I like to pull out the bottom cushions to here and let those be the ones that are hanging over a little bit because it provides a little bit of stability. And then on this top cushion, there is two little uh, connectors, whatever those are called. So you'll undo those so this backrest comes off. And this is just here to make the whole system, or you know, the backrest stick out a little bit further. There we go. That's gonna go there. And then this comes off there. Now this guy can just go underneath right there. And then this is going to go right there. And this one goes right there. And that is kind of your first bed. And I mean, it is a deep bed. You could definitely put two kids there, no problem. And yes, I'm going to lay down. Now it's Sunday. And yeah, I'm working on Sunday. Uh, only because my lovely wife is on a trip. Uh, and so I'm home alone. And I thought, hey, I'll come and do a video. And that's, you guys are getting a video. I'm also in casual clothes, which is weird. Because uh, I never make videos in a comfortable shirt, shirt and shorts. But I am today. So let me lay down. You guys can put in the comments about my outfit if you'd like to, but I like it. I would think you would lay to this side, like this. And you can see my feet just go over that um, line there. And I've got a couple of inches here, but this is, I mean, this is comfortable. Um, comfortable enough, I would say, to sleep on, especially for a holiday. Like, we're going on vacation. <laughs> This isn't the Taj Mahal. It is an Airstream. Now for the dinette area, what I like to do to get this out is first kind of bring up the back because those kind of clip into place. 
that's the harder point to get to and then click that and that comes right off and I'll just set this down here and then these legs here just screw into place so you're going to unscrew them all the way out because you want this this little point right here you want that all the way out when it goes down into um, the floor point this is going to turn and lock into place and that will shorten down and actually hold against this is like a mechanical hold to the floor which I, I do like about that when they come undone And then bring those out. Now these store in the closet. There's two little clips for them to go into in the closet. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull this top cushion off. Cause we're not gonna use that cushion there to give us extra thickness. Same thing for this side. Go ahead and pull this one off and these can store underneath here in a second put those there now it's easy for me just to pick the bases up push those back push that back so i can then set my table in place so that goes in place now i can simply put these back down Put this one back down in my cushions. Go right there and right there. So now I've got my second bed. Now this is definitely a one person bed. When you don't have the hatch, this is actually is deeper, but with the hatch, the, uh, the door itself takes up a little bit of space. Oh, that sun. So plenty of room. As you can see, I'm about five foot nine. If, you're, if you were six foot plus, there's plenty of length here. My feet aren't even close to the wall there. And I mean, my head has probably four or five inches right there. All right, so we're gonna check out the bathroom, the closet space and the bedroom here. So you're gonna have the double closet for the 27 fb the 25 will have a single you have the bar going across so this is a wardrobe here i got my backpack in there i'm just kind of hiding it now that's your two clips your storage area for those those bars uh, the legs for the table there that's where those clip into place and you've got some good storage above yes there is a light that's the old school light there i was talking about earlier and then your shower, same shower. This has not changed at all. Right there. And I am, yes, I'll stand in it. So in the shower, you guys have seen me have plenty of times on video. I'm not a small person. I fit in here just fine. Um, is it a large shower? Super? No, it's not super big. This isn't a class A motorhome. Um, but it is adequate. And that is what you're looking for when you're going camping like this is this you're going camping you're not going to you know some five-star hotel it's a five-star airstream uh, plenty of room here i can turn around of course the shower head is removable you can move it around you've got an on off button there as well there is a little clothesline that comes across that is nice and then you're going to have your controls right here for hot and cold water but i do like the the on off because in an rv you want to conserve water as much as you can because uh, you're going to fill your tanks up and you'll be outside. There is a seat down here if you want to sit down. Now, that seat is not necessarily for um, shaving your legs, ladies. That's really for tall folks to have somewhere to be able to get a little bit lower uh, when they're in the shower. Now, I'm going to swing right around here into the bathroom and go ahead and sit down on the commode. Now, the commode is all straight. So, it is straight forward. It's not diagonal a little bit. The rear bath, or the rear, not rear bath, sorry, rear bed flying class of the 28RB, the, the bathroom area is a little bit larger. And that's one of the key features of the 28RB, a little bit bigger bathroom. On the 27 and 25s, the bathroom's a little bit taller, but again, it's adequate. I can shut the door, 
I can do my business, no problem, and open the door. Now let's look at where the towel holder is, or paper towels. So paper towels are going to be down here, which I'm fine with because this is a sliding door, and it's easy to slide this door, get to the toilet paper, and you're good to go. I've seen some where like, you've got to open a door like this, but it's against your leg to get to the toilet paper. I don't like that. Now this is a porcelain commode, so it's very sturdy and strong. Uh, now as far as you know, prime position for, uh, for going to the restroom, I'm not gonna give that to any Airstream except for maybe the Classic. Um, or maybe the 23 Flying Cloud, 23 Interstate, or International, excuse me. Yeah, those bathrooms are huge. Um, you know, the only reason I say that is my knee is gonna touch, you know, my knee is touching right here. And when I have the door shut, my knee is touching the door as well. But is it adequate to be able to go to the bathroom? 100% it is. So let me flip you back around so you can see the dinette area, or I mean, dinette, excuse me, the restroom area. So you've got your sink that in, in kind of cabinet area that we've seen for quite a bit here with uh, Airstream in the 27s. We're going to have some storage right there. You've got your service mounted stainless steel sink that is a really nice round bowl. I love the way that looks. You've got your Gerard tankless hot water heater control here. Now remember, you're going to set this to the desired temperature that you want to take a shower at and then just turn the hot water on. You're not going to blend hot and cold water. Just turn that hot water on and go. If you want it a little bit hotter, come here and turn this up a little bit. If you want it a little bit cooler, come here and turn this down a little bit and it's numbered. Like right now, it's at 124 degrees. Now this is giving me an air light because there's no propane. But if there's propane on board, this will automatically do whatever it needs to do. It'll turn on and it'll do its thing. Um, it should at least. You know, set that to whatever temperature you want. I think they recommend starting at 120 and then going up or down from there. Now we've got some more stores there. Remember, toilet paper is right there. A little bit more stores behind. And then we got the same thing below there. Now there is a medicine cabinet here. And I was messing with this earlier today. You can kind of see my rig. Yes, I use a steady cam. Uh, I'm still not very good at taking video, but I'm doing this so you guys can see the new Airstreams, not for the quality of the video. But something I was noticing, you know, with the way this is angled, the, the mirror is kind of facing down at you, so it, it elongates your look. I don't know, you look strange looking up at it. But if you could bring this out and it stay about right there, it would be like a normal mirror. It would just feel normal, but it doesn't stay. So... Maybe that's something in the future Airstream can work in to place to where this would stop about right there. And then this kind of feels like a normal mirror. You can put it back down to see more of you if you need to. And then there is a little medicine cabinet back here. Uh, it goes to almost full hand of storage there. And then there's another little storage area right here that goes to full length. Of course, you're going to have power in here. Let me close this back down so I can get some light. Power here. You do have a tower. Tower. That is not a tower, tower, towel rack or holder here. And then a uh, what, hand towel holder right there. And then of course your on off switch for the lights in the bathroom. It is plumbed for heat right there. And there is one um, vent for air conditioning, which works very well. You also have an exhaust fan in both the bathroom area and the shower area, which I didn't mention while I was in here. It's right there. You just pull this in and push up, and then there's a fan in there that you can turn on right around there. Very nice setup. You know, make sure that gets good and closed as well. Now, this is the queen bed, as I mentioned. And like I said, on the 27, the, the queen bed is fine because you can easily get around the queen bed. Like, I can walk right, right around this bed. Uh, no problems. I can easily sit down in the bed and lay down. I can easily get up and go to the bathroom if I need to. The 25 is a different story, and that is when I did my twin versus queen bed video, which I'll link above, uh, you can take a look at that. I was primarily talking about the 23 and 25 uh, foot. I do like the twin bed personally because I like to have a lot of room. My wife and I sleep in the king size bed, so going to a queen bed does feel tight, and there's a solution for that with Airstream is the twin bed. I also like the extra outside storage you get with a twin bed. Now, you're kind of changing that storage. And what I mean by that is with the queen bed, you're still going to have a ton of storage underneath the bed. It's just on 
the twin bed, you're, you're sharing some of this storage with the outside. On this, on the queen bed, that is your outside storage right there in the back side of the bed area. But you do still have all of this space for storage in here. You can access the middle section from this front hole here if the bed is closed. And put this down. It, there is shocks to hold that up as well. And you can access to grab those tubs from the sides right there. So I do like, I mean, I like the setup of the queen bed. I'm not gonna say I don't, because I do own the 27 foot and the 30 foot because there is space to be able to walk around the room and get in and out of the bed. Now, one of the things I do like about the twin bed, I will say, and I said this in the twin bed versus queen bed video, but when you have a twin bed, it feels like a whole nother room that you can use instead of just the bed area. So let me lay down in the bed. Now, one of the upgrades and improvements they did for 2024 is improved mattresses. They're now four layers. And I will say that's a comfortable mattress. That is definitely a comfortable mattress. And something I want to point out, so I'm in the bedroom area, 71 degrees in the bedroom and 73 degrees in the front area. And that's just, just how this is set up with this AC being so far forward. I wonder, there's gotta be a way Airstream can make that kind of work a little bit better so that this area isn't cooling down so much better than that area. But I mean, I'm comfortable in here. I'm not sweating. I could very much be fine. And we're over 90 degrees outside here in North Carolina. And if I show you outside this window, it's just black asphalt everywhere. I mean, it's the worst condition possible for an RV to cool, and it's holding somewhere around 72 degrees, which is fantastic. So on the twin bed, you are going to have two, or excuse me, queen bed, you're going to have two nightstands, one on each side. You're also going to have one tin power. So if you are someone who needs, you know, equipment at night, there's power for that there. And then there's the new improved USB-A and USB-C connect. Oh, hold on. Ah, camera, my system sometimes goes funky on me. There we go. USB-A and USB-C. The other thing I really like about these, they close really well. Like normally <laughs> these things, these little doors just don't do, do well. But this one, man, it works so well, so easy. I do like this, the amount of counter space you have on each side and, and each person has uh, their own counter space. I like that about the queen bed, but man, I do like the way the twin bed makes this room open up. So that center window will open. You've got your other set of JL audio speakers that are on the separate volume knob. And then you've got more storage, just like the front and this area right here on the queen bed. You're gonna have another TV. Now this TV here is on a rotating arm, so our articulating arm. So you can bring this TV out and kind of center it up. Again, it is a smart TV. It is 12 volt, just like the front. You can do all your Netflix and Prime video and all that kind of stuff with this one. You've got your switch for the lights in the bedroom area with a dimmer right there. You have another inverted circuit. So if you are dry camping and you need to have, um, say a CPAP machine plugged in, you can connect it there. You'll have to use an extension cord to get from there to there, but it is possible because that is inverted and that's a 2000 watt inverter now, as I mentioned earlier. So let's kind of move back up to the front area. So I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transition to the outside and man, I'm not looking forward to it because it's hot outside, but uh, it's worth it for you guys to be able to see the 2024 Flying Cloud 27 FB. So let's jump to the outside and let's see what's new. Okay, it's a hot summer, but beautiful day here in North Carolina. Let's start the outside walk around of the 2024 Flying Cloud 27 FB. Now the outside, it's an Airstream. You can't see an Airstream on the road and not immediately recognize what it is uh, because it's iconic. There's not much that's changed with an Airstream over the years. Yeah, you know, of course the front caps have changed a little bit, but you gotta go way back. You know, I think it's the 50s is when uh, they started stretching them out and using less, uh, less panels up top here. 
Now, one thing I want, I want to mention, this front cap should seem taller to you, and it's not the camera. It is taller. Now, I'm going to show you uh, kind of a side-by-side, -side, uh, or not side-by-side, -side, but a comparison of another uh, Airstream I have here that does have the bubble versus this one that does not. So kind of, we'll jump to the front here. You're going to have that same powered ton jack, uh, 3,500 watts, watts, excuse me, 3,500 pound capacity, uh, just up, down. It's got a light there. There is a manual override, and in your goodie box is the, um, the little thing that goes down in there to be able to wind this up and down manually. If something happens, happens to it or you run out of power, you're not stuck. You do still have the Demco hitching system right there. Um, you're going to have something new. Airstream did not tell us about this, but there is now a lock on the battery box. Now, I haven't, the first 2024 I've gotten, so I haven't been able to say, hey, they're in every single one of them. But this 2024 Flying Cloud has the lock there that had been only on like the Pottery Barn and the Classic. So I like that the box is now lock, lockable. It's the same key that opens this front compartment here, the 001 key. Uh, you've got your Zamp power control there. Now it used to be this side was your AC power that was coming, or your DC power coming off the battery. And then the other side was your inverter. But boy, let me show you these thick boys. The cables now for this 2000 watt inverter are massive. So you can see there, it's a 200 amp cable, I think is what it says. Hold on. There's just not a good way to do this sometimes with one hand. Okay, let me open this. But you can just see that that's your, your 50 amp cable. It says 50 amps on it. So that's the cable coming off of the two batteries, that smaller red cable, the CD and DC power into the coach. That massive red cable is the cable for uh, the inverter. So you're going to have black coming in this side because it's so big. They just ran one cable in this side and they ran one cable in that side for the inverter. And then you still have your two black, your red and black for um, your power and negative. The red one here with the black box on it, that's going to feed the power ton jack. So the power ton jack stops working. There's a massive uh, fuse inside of that box and you want to check that first. Um, so you can see the negative coming in. I think that negative is going to feed both the inverter and the coach itself. And then you've got your smaller red cable is feeding DC power to the coach. And then the huge red cable that's feeding the inverter. But there's the battery box right there. You can fit easily two 100 amp hour battery worn batteries. That is actually what Airstream ships uh, when you opt for the lithium batteries. Now behind here is going to be your only outside storage on the 27 foot. It is a large area. You saw that from the inside. There's a light right there to be able to light this up at night, but that's your outside storage. Plus you can also use the back of your truck, right? Okay. And then behind here, you're going to have your two 30 pound propane tanks. I'll open that for you. I cut my hand here. So that's why there's a bandaid on there. All right. And that does have an auto transfer there. I always recommend turning it to one bottle once that bottle runs out you know you're down to one bottle if you if you leave it on auto there's a good chance you're just going to run both bottles down in the middle of the night and not realize it uh, so that's how i like to do it but not necessarily have to, how you have to do it now the solar guards here the center one will pull up you do have to open the center one center one first to be able to open that window now these right here will fault will kind of hinge out so that you can clean behind them same thing on the other one over there, and then that one opens there. You've got your stainless steel rock guard. Now, what's behind it is aluminum, but if you do get a dent, a rock, something pops up, this is easy to replace. That panel is not, so that's why that's there. Stainless steel rock guard. It comes with that white paper. We take that off before you take delivery of it. Uh, now, to take, open this one, you're going to pop off these acorn nuts here. There's a few of those, and this will swing out on a piano hinge, and you can clean behind it if you'd like to. Now, moving around, you're going to have your manual zip the awning. Now, I've got a video of the manual zip the awning and how to do that. I'm not going to do that whole thing in this one. I'll link it right there above if you want to see how to utilize the manual zip the awning and all the tips and tricks that come with it. Now, you've got your Gerard tankless hot water heater on this side. Now, again, it's tankless, 
it's only propane. There is an on off switch out here. If that switch is off, it will not work on the inside. So that is how you can turn that switch completely off if need be. But that is what the Gerard hot water heater looks like. I've heard good and bad things about it. Um, I think that I think it's like it's, it's st we're still haven't determined um, the Gerard being the right one or not. 110 power out here, not inverted. So you're only gonna get power through that when it's plugged in. Now you're gonna have Goodyear tires. These are the endurance tires. They are ST225 75s R15. So it's a 15 wheel, 15 inch wheel. Now your max load for max load 80 PSI. Most people are going to inflate these at a cold temperature of about 65 PSI and then let it run up from there. If you actually put these at um, 80 PSI, it'll bounce this camper all over the place. That's something you're gonna have to determine based on how much you're carrying. And there's a whole chart you can look up that will tell you uh, what PSI you need to be at for the amount of load that is on these tires. Now this has got the Dexter axle. This is a tandem axle. So these are separate and they're independent as well. So each tire is its, has its own system to, uh, to do the shock and all that kind of stuff. That's gonna make this camper ride significantly better, tow significantly better than anything else out there that's on the traditional leaf spring axle. And it also has a damper shock right there as well. Now these are also gonna be never lube hubs. So you don't have to do anything with these uh, bearings, excuse me, never lube bearings. Um, they, they stay lubed for their life. And it's uh, auto adjusting Dexter drum brakes as well. So a great system. That is part of why Airstreams do tow so well. That's also the aerodynamics, you know. Cross breeze works really good with this shape. The bullet shape is great for traveling down the road. Most will see an improvement on fuel economy when they go from towing a traditional camper or what we call SOB, some other brand, versus a Airstream. Now off to the back, we've got our backup lights. Everything's gonna be LED. You've got your standard backup camera there and then your marker lights on the top. There's marker lights going down the side to make sure this thing is good and visible while you're traveling down the road at night. Now with it being the hatch, you're gonna have this additional pad that goes across this back storage area because you can step up and in, uh, up into the back of the coach using the hatch. So they give you a nice spot to step onto. Now there is some wet storage in here. We call it wet storage simply because it is probably gonna get wet but it's a nice spot to store things like water hoses, uh, leveling blocks, those types of things fit in there quite nice. Um, ooh, warm, it's warm today. That is hot. Now I am gonna open this hatch. So you're gonna kinda do your first turn, it's not unlocked yet. You gotta do one more and this is the one where something actually happens. Now it's, un it's unlatched. The lock is right here. So if you wanna lock this at night, which you know, of course I recommend, it's right there, it's a separate key. Now to open this, you're just gonna pull. It is on shocks, so it will open itself and it will stay up. And that is the hatch that you can get on any of the 25FB, 27FB flying clouds and in internationals. It used to be something you could only get on a special edition. Now you can get it on the flying clouds and internationals. There is a screen that will pull down. That is right here. Man, I can feel all the air escaping out now that I've got that open, the ACs are running. So you pull that screen down, it's a magnetic. There's magnets right there that will hold it down. And there's a magnet there that will hold it down. And that way you can open your massive hatch and just have all of the outside come in, outside air come in, but no bugs. And then to put that away, I'm gonna pick it up and it will kind of stay where you stop it. So if you pull it halfway, it'll stay there. It won't swing up on you and you know, throw up against that, which is quite nice. Now, this Mac, these are little connections here just for the um, light over the license plate. Gosh, I can't think, <laughs> license plate. So you do wanna have the window awning put away before you open this, and of course the window closed before you open it. And then to close it, you just push down. Of course, that's the first, but you're gonna actually fill it lock in place on that last turn there and then close that down. That is the hatch for the 25 FB and 27 FB Flying Cloud International. So cool, such a cool door. Oh man, I mean, you can store stuff in there if you need to. 
and of course just open that up and look out at the lake look out at the river look out into nature whatever it might be now i'm going to pull around to this side you're going to have your furnace right there now these two windows open there's a really nice window on and going all the way across on the 27fb now that is an option for flying cloud it's standard on international but on flying cloud it's going to be an option and uh, of course these folks option for that which is wise on a hot summer day like today pulling those out while the sun is on that side will help to cool the camper off by a good four or five degrees um, somewhere around there now this is 50 amps since it has a second ac so you're going to see the 50 amp smart plug right here is a great system i love i love this smart plug it's so much easier to use you just squeeze right there and this pops right out and it just snaps right into place i'll put a little video in of me doing that on the 30 amp um, love that system and then right beside it is the new smart plug data port and um, coax cable that i was talking about inside so it's going to match this one but it's actually labeled to av data and it this says dc but there's no dc on this so i'm not sure what that means and then even this looks very similar to the way the regular smart plug looks but then you're going to have the coax cable in your cat 6 data port right there so that's where you're going to plug starlink in now of course you're going to need an adapter that will go from the dish you know to take that proprietary cable coming off the satellite dish uh, convert it to a cat 5 cat 6 port data port plug it into there and then it will go inside and you don't have to drill a hole in the side of your airstream just to get um starlink inside you've got your city water fill here which does have the pressure regulator built in then you're going to have your black tank flush there remember remember to use this every time you use your airstream if you don't use it you lose it it'll get clogged up and it's not cheap to fix uh, potable water fill is right in here and then your outside shower hot and cold water is right there and that's just a traditional rv outside shower now something that i forget often to show and a lot of my videos is right here and that's this tube this tube goes all the way up to that front ac and that is the condensation water coming off of that air conditioner so instead of that water coming down the side of your beautiful airstream it's going to come right down through this hose drop out down here i'm sure at some point you'll need to um, either climb up to the top or right here just stick a air hose and blow air up through there to clean those out i'm guessing there's one there and one here in the back front somewhere or do they connect them together it's a good question this is two acs oh there's two huh. so they're both right here uh, let's see if my camera can grab yep one right there one right there so both acs are right there and that's just going to drip right out for you so that you don't have to worry about water coming down off the side of the rv and then leaving a street going down the side of the rv because the air conditioner is running and then you've got your black and gray tank outlet here so one connection gray tank on this side black tank on this side remember always pull black first and then gray gray will it's just soapy water so it'll wash that out there is a light here uh, if you are connecting at night or dumping at night you have a light right there and then up here you're gonna have your hold on there we go you're gonna have your sewer hose storage right there in that container which is super nice that they give you that and if you need two of those you can buy that off of amazon and add two of them right there super easy to do i'm going to give you a shot of this front stabilizer that's right here it's a heavy duty stabilizer these are manual but you can easily get an adapter to go on that and then just use a drill to run that down and then it is a fully enclosed underbelly they enclose that with aluminum and i didn't mention on the inside i should have but this is going to have the composite floor in it there's no wood in the floor on this coach unlike most of your other brands out there it's a composite floor it's one sheet so it's one sheet all the way back 28 foot um, it's all cut with a cnc machine so it's exactly the spec they, they even go in with the cnc machine and pre-drill all the holes so that the guys know exactly where to put bolts through and screw things all that kind of stuff so that is they did that in 2020 it's a game changer for airstream because that was one of those things where you did actually have to check the floor regularly if you were doing a um a change with airstream uh, you don't have to worry about that with this one fantastic 
Um, now what I want to do now, I'm going to get a ladder and I'm going to show you the new ACs up top and show you the new roof and all of that good stuff. All right, so now I'm kind of towards the back. You've got your solar input right there. Let's see if I can zoom in. So that's your solar input. All three are being used because we do have three solar panels that are going into the system. And those total solar panels right here. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a Marlin panel. It is a rigid panel. They do raise it up off the coach a little bit. That's going to help with solar transfer for uh, heat transfer. There's your other skylight that's in uh, the living area over kind of the kitchen area. And then one of your fantastic, or it's a Dometic fan. One of your Dometic fans there. And then you can see the other skylight there. Uh, the GE ACs are on, so you can hear those running on video. They're louder, I mean, they're loud, but I wouldn't say they're louder than any other air conditioner system that I've seen. One thing I wanna point out though, man, these babies are wide. Look at that wide thing. Um, you know, it's the profile, so it's different than the other GE ACs that we've seen. We have seen those, uh, our Wara brand, it's a private label, uses the GE AC, um, but not the profile, it's a different one. That sucker is wide. I mean, right there's a Dometic. And you see it compared to the GE. It looks tiny compared to the GE. Uh, I don't know why it's so big, if that's something about its efficiency, uh, maybe better airflow. I'm not sure, I mean, there's not, I'm not seeing any marketing material for GE profile. I even tried to go on the website and I couldn't find this unit on their website. It is on like some of the uh, part manufacturer, or, like part websites, um, but it's not there. And then I wanted to show you right there, you can see there's the bubble. And this is an old classic. Uh, so it's the original you know, style that they did. So you had two joints right there because it had to transition. Now you're down to one joint, as you can see right there with the roof. So, you know, less, uh, le you know, less places for you to have a leak if you have a leak. And then now you don't have that transition anymore because um, that front cap is front and rear caps coming all the way up to the height of the ceiling. And then again, they're able to do that because they're using that new rib um, technology, the new pressed rib. So that is the top of the, the new 2024 Flying Cloud AC, it's FB, sorry. 2024 Flying Cloud 27 FB, um, well, with the hatch. But there we go. Let me go to the other side just to make sure there's nothing different there. Now, I'm on the campsite side. So I was on the non-campsite side recording from that side. And then this side's gonna give me a much better side-by-side -side comparison. So there's the original bubble right there. And that is the non, that's the new roof. That is, I mean, this looks great. And I love that there's less, there's a less sealant, there's less connection points up here. And then there's another one of your panels for solar. And then the third one's up there. Is there room for more solar? You bet. There's definitely more room. There's only three ports in that box there, but there's definitely more room for, uh, for solar if you want to add that. And you can see your two GE profile air conditioners side by side right there now of course if you do the one you're just gonna have this one in the back that's a 15,000 BTU I highly recommend if you're buying a 27 foot or 28 foot or 30 well the 30s come with it but 27 28s a second AC don't don't do it to yourself because it'll be hard to trade it and it'll be hard to sell it you want two ACs so go ahead and pay for that upgrade or order you one with two ACs whatever you got to do um, to get them all right let's see I don't see anything else. I think, I need to ask, I think that is going to be where you get in for some of your things like air connected and uh, uh, satellite, things like that, because it is pre-wired for air connected. And I was looking for that port up here. I've never asked where it was. Um, yeah, I don't see it up here. So I'm wondering if that's what that is for, right? Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> right there. That's just your vents for your... Um, right here that's going to be your vents for the um, plumbing system right there all right let me back back up yep that's the roof 
if you've made it to this point of the video, I just want to say thank you. Got all the way to the end. I've never talked about what comes in the box currently, at least we'll say for 2024 uh, model year. So I'm going to do that real quick. This is your goodie box that Airstream sends to you. So the first thing you're going to have in here is the monitor for your um, backup camera. It is a wireless backup camera system. I'm not sure if it uses, they say it uses Wise, Wise, Wise Sight 2.0 technology. Now this is an updated tech. Um, if you've got an older Airstream and you're thinking you want to upgrade to the bigger monitor, you're not able to do that. You have to also upgrade the camera in the back uh, to be able to do that. Now this camera here, get this out. This is the larger monitor. Uh, it's really nice. Like I, I, I mean, it's it's a nice setup. There's a little pullout. You can go there. There's a HDMI or HD. Uh, excuse me, USB there. I'm guessing that's probably for doing upgrades, things like that. But there is a um, a little connector that goes on here, and then that allows you to use a suction cup to mount it to your windshield. Um, that type of stuff. Now it should be already connected to your um, backup camera when you go to use it for the first time. If it's not, it's super easy to do. There's a ton of videos on, out there about how to do it, but you're basically gonna hit this pair button with the, the camera turned off. Now that camera only works when your daytime, or your, not daytime running lights, but your, your marker lights are turned on. So you know, most, of your, most vehicles now are, are auto. If it's set on auto, that camera is not gonna work. So you're gonna wanna go from auto to probably off and then that first point would be just your, your marker lights on your truck in the camper. You wanna run with those on all the time anyway when you're driving. So I would just say when you're towing, turn the lights on all the way and then your camera is gonna work at that point. But to pair, you wanna have this plugged into your, your uh, cigarette lighter and then hit this pair button. You'll hit and hold that until it starts to say it's pairing. Once it's saying, once it says that it's pairing, then you turn your turn your lights on. Once that camera turns on, it's automatically searching uh, for something to pair to, uh, and it will see that this wants to pair to it, and then it'll pair to it. But this is it's a really cool system. It seems to work really well. I haven't heard a lot of complaints on. I really haven't heard any complaints on this backup camera system. So if you're looking for your monitor and your dealer didn't tell you where it was. It's in this box here. Uh, you'll want to go grab that box and get your monitor out. I would say you want to make sure this is in the box before you take your Airstream 2, just in case it isn't there. You can um, ask the dealer about that before you leave the first time. You want to address any issues before you leave the lot um, when you're doing your when you're doing your pickup. Now the other thing that's in here, and I'm guessing this is new for 2024, is these massive um, black and gray or black and red power cables this is probably for connecting the two batteries together um, if you install two batteries which everybody installs two batteries and then it's got a breaker in here that's a 300 amp max breaker that's huge you also get this Klein tool checker for your power plugs for each power plug so you can check the power and make sure that is correct this is going to be a really cool um, little Airstream branded um, it's not a torque wrench, but it's just a wrench. It folds out. It gives you a 19 millimeter. Um, what is that? One 17 millimeter, 21 millimeter. And then this one is just a socket, like a normal socket in. But it comes out in that kind of old school scissor thing. I think about Christmas movies when I think about that. Uh, and then it folds up. It's Airstream 4-way lug wrench. Stow and go. That comes with it. And it's Airstream branded. This is... The, the little arm that will go into the power ton jack if the power ton jack stops working. So it becomes a manual ton jack. You're also gonna find your remotes in here for your TVs. Now this, this um, little arm thing and this plate is for your batteries. So your dealer should install this on the batteries themselves um, you know, when they install your batteries for you. Now in 2024, there is a option to get uh, basically, there's three solar options, uh, the no solar, uh, solar only, and then solar with lithium batteries. That would be the Battleborn batteries. If you opt for the solar with lithium batteries, this will be installed already from the factory. But if it gets here like it has been for 2022 with no batteries, 
then the dealer would need to grab this plate. It's going to sit between the two batteries, so one battery on one side and the other battery on the other side, and then this just screws down. You've got some screws that probably went to the TVs because you've got the TV feet. And you're also going to have a quick disconnect cable for grills. Now, it does have to be a low-pressure grill to be able to use this. Uh, there's some regulator things that will trans that will uh, switch that over for some of your grills, your like Weber grills and things. Airstream sells a grill on their website. It's basically a Weber Airstream branded grill that already has the so the low pressure uh, regulator stuff in there to make it work. But you can't just plug any grill into that. But there's that quick disconnect off the front tongue. This is what you plug into that, and you can convert it. And then the other thing that's going to be in here is your Airstream branded doormat, and uh, each. I think each, well, the Flying Cloud Interstate, I mean, International and Globetrotter use the same one. And I think Pottery Barn and Classic get their own uh, doormat. So that's what's in the box. If you have ever been curious what's in the box, when you see it in videos, that is what is in the box. I hope you found that helpful. And you know what to look for now. That's 2024 model year. Make sure your camera receiver is in there. Now, if you got to this point in the video, I just want to say thank you. First of all, thanks for watching this video. Uh, thank you for all of those, all of you who have, have uh, subscribed and liked videos and commented on videos. All of you have said hey to me uh, when you come by the store or at a show. Now, I just want to say I really do appreciate that. I love meeting you guys and, and helping you the best that I can. Uh, I hope you found this video on the 2024 helpful, especially as you're kind of figuring out what you want to do between 23 and 24. Um, yeah, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave those in the comment. If you're interested in getting a Flying Cloud or any Airstream, my contact inf information is there below in the comments as well. Be happy to assist, assist you in that. Uh, for now, you guys live riveted, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.